We're at the launch of the Tata Harrier, the electric Tata Harrier. And with us today is Anand Kulkarni, the head of Tata's electric uh, division, the, the technical <laughs> guru right behind it. And uh, first of all, Anand, uh, thank you for having us here and congratulations on the launch. Thank you very much and thank you for having me with you. Oh, always a pleasure, Anand. So there's a lot of technical details that you've just shared with us and I want to dive straight into that uh, mm -hmm. because it is the Harrier EV, yes, the top hat as we can see. Uh, but as you've stressed, it is pretty much all new. It's, it's, uh, uh, the innards are all new and starting with, let's say, Tidal, your uh, new e, e architecture, if I can call it that. Yes. Uh, so, can you tell us some of the highlights and, you know, the main features of, uh, of Tidal, your new? Uh, so, uh, the Tidal is uh, the new e, &E architecture. And uh, as we go on, uh, software is becoming a real enabler. And whether it is in terms of delivering capability, delivering performance, delivering safety features, uh, everything is getting integrated into the uh, software layer. So uh, Harrier EV has a layer called uh, Tidal. Tidal stands for Tata Intelligent Digital Architecture Layer, and which is one that brings all of uh, the software capabilities together to deliver exceedingly high levels of not only comfort, but also uh, safety. Uh, so whether it be ADAS, whether it be uh, features of infotainment, or whether it be the high-tech uh, technology features that we have delivered in the Harrier.EV, mm -hmm. it all comes together with the uh, Tidal. Uh, the Tidal is an extremely capable layer. Uh, it runs on uh, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon mm -hmm. uh, with high compute capabilities. The, there is an uh, automated park assist that has been integrated along with Continental, which also runs uh, high compute chips. Okay. Uh, which gives it exceedingly high levels of granularity in anywhere parking mm -hmm. and um, the ability to really use this very, very effectively. Okay, so, you know, will we see, Anand, the uh, titles, uh, like you said, it starts as new e, e architecture. Will we see this now migrate to the other Tata products? Because I'm sure you'd want this kind of capability in your other products Correct. also, right? Correct. And as we do this, uh, uh, this will become the sort of bedrock for the software delivery. Of course, uh, this is a continuously evolving space mm -hmm. and therefore uh, uh, it will keep on getting enhanced, it will keep getting evolved, but Tidal will be the platform uh, architecture okay. that we run forward. For the legacy brands as well? Uh, the on the, on the legacy brands uh, and as we were uh, speaking, right. uh, depending upon what kind of features you are wanting to utilize, uh, you could do some changes. Uh, it's not a single layer uh, or a single hardware that will fit all sizes right. and therefore we will have to make some modifications which we will do as we go on. Got it. And you know the other big thing is uh, with the electric carrier is you're now back into four-wheel drive, uh, right, uh, for, for Tata as a, as a, as a brand and uh, it's exciting to hear. I just want to know from you, uh, Anand, before we get into the technical details of it is, uh, what's your uh, sort of expectation from the four-wheel drive uh, Harrier EV. In terms of uh, customer acceptance, will it just be a brand shape or limited volume or you think there will be more volumes compared to the ICE uh, uh, products? So first of all, let us understand what is the customer wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the customers today are wanting to uh, explore, they want uh, to seek out adventures and they want to uh, uh, do some things that they may not have done before. And uh, therefore, the 4x4 or the all-wheel drive actually mm -hmm. Uh, is something that uh, gives them the capability to do so. To your question of whether uh, this will uh, really be something that the customers uh, will, uh, will really go for, uh, depends on the use cases and depends on what the customers would want to do. It is, uh, capability is available. Uh, the ability to unlock adventure and uh, the ability to take the car anywhere is available. We say that because of what we have done on the uh, architecture, the car is unfazed by anything okay. and it is undaunted and unstoppable uh, in a lot of ways. Right. And uh, uh, I think there is a lot of people who would want to experience this. Okay. And then uh, depending on how it fits into their lifestyles, uh, I think there will be a good acceptance to this. Okay, great. And uh, I think from the motors that you just spoke of, the front is an induction motor, the rear is a uh, PMS, uh, PMS uh, so which means uh, this would be the primary motor would be the rear motor. Correct. Okay. So what's the the rationale in that? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, let's say with uh, 
with your two-wheel drive ones, it's the front that's the main main axle, right? Because the, your front wheel drive on the curve, the Nexon, etc. Uh, et so, uh, why this shift? Uh, you see, the the choice of where to provide drive depends on the kind of vehicle and the kind of capability that you need to provide. So, for example, if uh, a Harrier kind of a vehicle, which has a long wheelbase, uh, significantly high width and is uh, needing to be also capable, it will mean it will have to uh, scale gradients. Uh, you want to then uh, make sure that you do not have uh, weight transfer related issues where despite providing power, despite providing torque to the motor, if uh, traction is not available, uh, then you would, uh, you would not be able to be as capable. Mm -hmm. And therefore, a rear wheel drive configuration on this kind of uh, uh, vehicle works best as the primary drive. Okay. Of course, uh, when you have the front wheel drive as well, uh, you can use that as an additional element of traction. Mm -hmm. And something that I spoke to you about, the ability to dynamically share loads right. between the front motor and the rear motor. And to do that over all kinds of terrains gives you this extra capability. Okay. And uh, then, uh, it, it is a car that go, can go anywhere and it is a car that uh, can deal with whatever surfaces that it is expected to okay. work on. So also, you know, the motors, you spoke of uh, the fact that you have a power rating from the motors combined of about uh, 390, close to, close to 400 horsepower. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but the actual one in use right now is about 312 or 313 horsepower. Uh, what is the limitation there? Uh, no, so let me repeat the numbers okay. because the installed uh, uh, power is okay. about 291. Okay. And the actual utilizable uh, at any given point of uh, time okay. peak is 230 odd uh, kilowatt. kilowatts. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's how the uh, right. uh, motors are uh, installed. Uh, and uh, sorry, but... Uh, so, so, you know, why is the, the actual capacity lower? Uh, well, the actual capacity is lower because uh, this depends on how much you can draw from the battery, okay. which is a so function the of the battery uh, battery size as well as right. uh, the the discharge rates of the right. battery, and th that's how it is. Got it. So it's a discharge rate right now from your from your Correct. battery, and, Correct. The and battery that's, that's how it will happen. Yes, in many it, cases. it's it's, yes. A, it's a case in many many vehicles as well, right? Correct. Uh, right. right. And uh, you know the range is something else which we should talk about. Yes. Uh, Particularly You've, because it's an EV. Uh, yes. Uh, so, if you could just explain, uh, you know, to our viewers, uh, C75, we know it's what you said, 75% of your customers w are, are achieving that from your, Correct. From your past Correct. So, uh, uh, thank you for that. And uh, at the launch of the curve, we introduced this parameter that we've called C75 because right. we had feedback from our customers uh, that uh, they wouldn't be able to uh, they wouldn't be able to expect a certain range based on only the certified ranges right. uh, because the certified has a certain uh, mm -hmm. way of running tests, so and so forth. So uh, the C75 came back from billions of kilometers of data uh, analyzed on actual drive conditions in different uh, road conditions, different cities within the country. And we said, this is the uh, C75, it's a median that 75% of our customers can expect uh, in their daily life. Uh, the C75 has proven to be a very, very effective parameter because once we started communicating that to our customers, they found that uh, the dissonance of range communication dropped significantly. And therefore, uh, we think going forward, communicating C75, which is more a real life number, is absolutely helpful to customers. Uh, so, uh, while uh, on this car, while the certified range uh, on the 75 kilowatt hour battery stands at a 627 uh, kilometers, uh, the C75 number is between 480 to 505. That's what most customers should be able to achieve uh, in their daily Real life. life. And yeah. this is on the larger battery, the, this is on the, larger the 75 battery. kilowatt uh, battery. So, Anand, I know uh, it's a busy day for you. So, the last question uh, coming to the insides uh, of the car. There's a lot of new tech also that Tidal brings in, uh, like uh, I think uh, the Dolby Sound System 5.1 along with a new LED, uh, QLED screen. Uh, could you tell us some, some highlights of that system? So this is the first time uh, that a new QLED, QLED screen okay. uh, by Samsung has been integrated into a car of this category uh, okay. globally. Okay. Okay, this is a global first. And uh, we always say that uh, the way to immersive uh, experiences is not unidimensional. Uh, it is uh, multidimensional. 
and therefore while uh, the industry has focused uh, in some ways on uh, enhancing and expanding the sound capabilities, it's also time that we uh, enhance and expand the visual capabilities and therefore this QLED screen, Neo QLED screen brings those capabilities along with the Dolby and b uh, creates an experience that is absolutely immersive and it is really fantastic. And uh, I would really, uh, we have a booth, we have a pavilion and you should experience that. No, absolutely, I'm waiting to experience that and the entire car, which uh, Definitely. we should be uh, driving very soon. So uh, thank you, Anand, uh, so much for much. the time and uh, stay tuned to the Autocar India channel. We'll have the review coming up really soon. Thank you so much.